In today's video, we'll talk all about Ethereum. So will Ethereum actually outperform Bitcoin in 2024 in this upcoming cycle? And can other projects like Solana replace Ethereum and have better returns like some people claim? What do the metrics actually look like? And uh, what am I actually seeing in the Ethereum ecosystem that is the most worthy to invest in? So what are my main portfolio holdings in this area? I know a lot of people know layer twos already. Are they really that big of a deal? And are there any other sectors in, in Ethereum that can see much larger adoption, much higher potential? So we'll get into that as well. Okay. So uh, welcome everyone. If you're new here to the channel, my name is Dennis. I'm a crypto angel investor for the past five years, and I have invested in over hundred crypto companies. On this channel, I share my views on market trends and investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. Okay, uh, let's get straight into it. So yesterday on our live stream, we have just covered Ethereum, but I really wanted to give you guys a more deeper dive because uh, yesterday it was really kind of rushed and I basically presented the idea that, um, you know, we have been following Ethereum for a very long time. I have been an Ethereum maxi, not, not necessarily maximalist, but I have always loved Ethereum. And um, even in my Twitter profile, you see that I have always had the Ethereum ultrasound uh, logo since all the way back in the bear market. And this is really because, well, Ethereum throughout this bear market and even in this recent run up hasn't really caught up with Bitcoin and the rest of the market. And I think eventually it will catch on. So we also covered this yesterday on the Ethereum versus Bitcoin ratio and how right at this um, range here, if we zoom in at around 0 0.05, that ratio level is actually a really good target, right? So we talked about this yesterday, how the risk to reward here for Ethereum is really strong, right? Even though a lot of people say that, oh, Ethereum is dead. It hasn't really outperformed the market in this recent run in the past month. That just to me shows that Ethereum is undervalued. That's just how I looked at it and how, you know, the downside risk for Ethereum isn't really that high anymore. If you really think Ethereum will die and be replaced by other things, well, you still can bet on that scenario and the downside for how uh, for the confirmation of that event will not be that far away. So this is what we covered yesterday. Now, uh, I just want to give you guys some more fundamental perspectives of what Ethereum is at today. So Ethereum is still the most important thing aside from Bitcoin, right? In throughout crypto, yes, there are cycles. Yes, there are hype waves around Sol Solana, around other chains. <coughs> but when you look at actual dominance, Ethereum still takes up 16.75% of the entire crypto market cap. And when you look at the... Uh, history of this market cap dominance, you see that for the past one, not one, uh, two and a half years, Ethereum has ranged between 16% uh, of market dominance to as high as 20%, almost 21%. So not only is it high dominance, but this maintenance of high dominance throughout the bear market is really strong, right? So uh, for the experienced crypto investors, you guys would know that in a bear market, the popular altcoins usually get replaced by Bitcoin, where Bitcoin gains all the uh, dominance again, all the money flows back into Bitcoin. And this is why you see most altcoins lose significant market dominance in the bear market. However, for Ethereum, well, this wasn't the case, right? Because this stage was the uh, bull market and then it peaked in the bull market, it had a brief st uh, stint in the I want to say this is the Luna crash, either Luna or FTX. Yeah, this one was Luna. This one was the FTX crash. But you see, nothing really has happened, right? Has bounced all the way back up to even towards the bull market tops in terms of market dominance. And this time around, yes, it came pretty low to these levels, but you cannot call this a, a dominance breakdown yet. Not com uh, compared to other altcoins. So every other altcoin out there, when you look at them, their market dominance is way down from the bear, uh, from the bull market levels. So um, aside from that, on a fundamental perspective, Ethereum is also very, very special. So Ethereum has been named as a commodity 
time and time again from all the U.S. regulating entities, CFTC, ICC, the DOJ, when they went after Binance, when they recently went after uh, Uniswap. In every single scenario, they have always declared Ethereum as a commodity, right? It's not a security, uh, it's a commodity. So just like Bitcoin, it's completely safe for any investor to get into. It can be offered on any exchange, any platform. This is huge, right? So even though they haven't, the, the SEC still is very reluctant to come out and say this, but they cannot deny that this status is there. I, I think it's very, very hard for them to go back on their words on this point. Uh, and this is important because commodities are treated as basic goods. It's really that special level um, of uh, recognition where once you are a commodity, you cannot go back to security and uh, this really brings in the institutional adoption and the widespread, you know, retail platform adoption uh, when when talking about U.S. markets, things like PayPal, Robinhood, uh, basically everyday investors can get into these assets. Now, uh, last but not least, you also have the Ethereum ETF, uh, and we have had a bunch of buzz coming from this uh, in the past two months or so when Grayscale first try to convert their spot uh, Ethereum ETF uh, from their futures Ethereum ETF. And then later on, ARK Invest also filed for their Ethereum spot ETF. But this past month, this really has been confirmed. So BlackRock, the market leader by far, also filed for a spot Ethereum ETF, which means an Ethereum ETF is, I want to say, 99% confirmed to be coming in 2024. Right, so right after the Bitcoin ETF comes, uh, BlackRock, with their approval rate, most likely will also push this Ethereum ETF to fruition. Uh, when compared this to other cryptocurrencies out there, a lot of people say, "Oh, we will have a XRP ETF, or you know, Litecoin ETF, Bitcoin Cash ETF, or Solana ETF." Those are way further down the line, and until we actually see something coming from real TradFi institutions, especially BlackRock, that is a night and day difference, really. So another major point uh, to consider for Ethereum. Okay, <clears throat> quick summary there. So what are the main points that uh, we have going for Ethereum in this cycle? So we have the resilient market dominance with uh, Ethereum taking up still uh, consistently 16 to 20 percent of the total crypto market cap and growing with it. Uh, Ethereum's classification as a commodity and the Ethereum ETF. <clears throat> These three fundamental perspectives really put together Ethereum still likely to lead the market going into 2024. Now, if you want to look at the Ethereum uh, potential, I want to bring you guys to two videos that we have made before. So my basis in this cycle for Bitcoin, uh, that, that is the number one thing to consider, is that I see Bitcoin reaching something like 200k. This is in my exit strategy as well, uh, in our Reason live stream. So basically, I want to give myself a 200k target. I think that's not too optimistic, but also not too conservative so that it's enough profit for me to really uh, take majority uh, portfolio out of the uh, out of the table and so that I don't get hit by the bear market. And <clears throat> on top of this, I see Ethereum potentially hitting, uh, it says 10k here, but I want to say 15k. If you want to go into this uh, video in depth, I actually go uh, and present my case for Ethereum hitting 15k. And this is also in my exit strategy uh, video as well, where you can see here, four step plan. So for Ethereum to hit that 15k mark and for Bitcoin to hit 200k, uh, my baseline assumption for the entire crypto market is that we might be able to see something like 10 trillion in total crypto market cap for all cryptocurrencies. Now, on top of that, uh, that means Bitcoin probably will lose some market dominance and <clears throat> start to come down again as more and more altcoins pop up. But at least I would like to see 200k for Bitcoin and for Ethereum. Well, as long as they can maintain this kind of market dominance, and even if 
the total crypto market cap doesn't hit 10 trillion, right? Uh, when we're looking at 15, uh, 15K Ethereum, if uh, let's say dominance can rise back above again in a typical bull run fashion towards 20% market dominance, so 20% uh, with 15,000 uh, 15, per Ethereum, that gives us a uh, market cap of uh, for Ethereum of um, 1 1.5, 1.6 trillion, right? So, no, not 1. Uh, 1. 1.8 trillion. Yeah, so we would be looking at about 9 trillion total crypto market cap. Napkin math there, don't quote me on it. So overall, those are the baseline targets I'm looking at, right? So with that in mind, what are the, let's just quickly compare Bitcoin versus Ethereum to get this out of the way, right? So for Bitcoin, going from current price of around 43,000 towards the, uh, my fair estimate of around 200K, that gives us, right, divided by 43,000, that gives us about a 4.6x return for Bitcoin. Now, when we look at Ethereum, let's take 15,000 divided by, uh, today price is around 23.50. So that's about a 6.4x return. So that's the baseline, right? And that settles it directly. Uh, in my assumption, is Ethereum worth holding versus Bitcoin? The answer is yes. So Ethereum, I could, see it i'll perform bitcoin by about uh 6.4 divided by 2 uh, 4.5 by about 42 percent right 1.4 x um performance of ethereum versus bitcoin with my uh, price target as uh, uh, market cap target assumption now does this number make sense well let's take a look at ethereum versus bitcoin ratio then right so not looking at short-term price, let's just look at how far along is Ethereum versus Bitcoin today. So I have always had this chart drawn. Um, and even when you look back at our Ethereum video, this Ethereum video here, I also talked about the ETH versus BTC chart and how this chart has also held super well in this bear market, right? So uh, when ETH Ethereum versus Bitcoin first peaked, this was May 2021. This was the peak of the bull market. And then when the bull market officially ended in November 2021, this was when Bitcoin hit 67,000 and started to go down only. Yes, Ethereum had two pretty bad drops, right? This was the first drop when Luna crashed, and this was the slow bleed after FTX crashed. But you see, you cannot say this is a breakdown, right? Because this was very slow bleed, but the support level still held right at uh, this 0 0.05 ratio level of Ethereum versus Bitcoin. So can Ethereum actually just die versus Bitcoin and drop much lower? Sure, it's possible. But like I mentioned in our uh, live stream yesterday, we really do need to wait for this level to break and wait for a weekly confirmation for ethereum to drop below this level only then will i consider that okay maybe bitcoin is going to significantly outrun ethereum and ethereum is no longer worth holding as a very safe asset but this never happened right and so until that happens i'm not going to take that approach and i will continue to assume that ethereum will eventually make this upside comeback right and what is the upside comeback looking like? So we drew this uh, rainbow chart yesterday. So we had, um, let me just end this. So we had the Bitcoin halving rainbow chart drawn yesterday to present uh, the cycle nature of Ethereum's outperformance versus Bitcoin. So you see in 2015, this cycle, when Ethereum was in this late stages of the uh, of the bear market, when it was very close to the uh, Bitcoin halving with about six months away, you see how Ethereum 
really start to run against Bitcoin, right? So this ratio started to go up. And when you uh, got into these, um, to Ethereum to bet on its outperformance versus Bitcoin, you see this yield AX return. And similarly in the 2020 cycle, similar returns here, albeit uh, it had a diminishing return, but nonetheless still a 3X outperformance of Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Now, I don't think we will see another 3X outperformance of Ethereum versus Bitcoin because uh, Ethereum is only about uh, one, about 40% of the market cap versus Bitcoin today, right? So when you look at uh, actual market cap right here, yeah, Ethereum is at 288, 283 billion, Bitcoin is at 850 billion. So that's about one third, yeah, one third exactly. So if you really still want a 3x return of Ethereum versus Bitcoin, then you are basically saying, you're basically betting that Ethereum will flip Bitcoin, become the number one coin. I don't think that will happen. I, I think that's almost impossible uh, based on where both of the assets stand today. However, is the timing right for today? Is Ethereum likely to make a comeback against Ethereum? And for this purple stage of the rainbow chart start to tick up again. I think that's very likely, right? So when we look at how well Ethereum has held throughout this usually bearish time for the ETH BTC ratio, it held really well. And especially in this current run with Bitcoin going into 2024 with the Bitcoin ETF on the verge of being approved in the next 33 days or so, Ethereum ETF coming shortly after, I, I don't see how Ethereum versus Bitcoin ratio should continue to drop, right? Uh, so with that in mind, this is kind of the scenario I'm seeing, right? So I think Ethereum should be able to come back towards these local highs versus Bitcoin and for uh, Ethereum to essentially make about a 50% uh, 50 comeback on the ETH BTC ratio, right? So... That means essentially, uh, if Bitcoin goes up 100%, Ethereum goes up 150%. If Bitcoin goes up 2x, Ethereum goes up 3x. Uh, is that super outstanding returns? No, it's not parabolic, but is that worthwhile to have? I think so, because I think the chances of this actually happening is quite high. So as long as the market is good, as long as we have another crypto bull run, I see this as a very likely scenario to play out. And the actual downside for Ethereum to go much lower in price is very, very low at this point. So that's why even though it's not a you know 10x return versus Bitcoin, I still have a huge chunk of my portfolio in Ethereum. And I do think betting on Ethereum to outperform Bitcoin in 2024 is very, very smart. Uh, so when you compare this 50% uh, our performance of Ethereum versus Bitcoin. And when you look at our uh, price target for Ethereum versus Bitcoin performance, that matches, right? So this gives us 42% outperformance uh, towards the previous all time high. That's about 50% outperformance. So overall, numbers all match up. Okay, so that's Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Now, what about other smaller altcoins, right? Most obvious one we have to talk about is Solana, right? Solana has had its huge run up recently and we have been trading Solana and Solana has been doing really well short term, but can Solana actually outperform Ethereum in this cycle? A lot of people say this, right? A lot of people say, uh, have been turning around, even some of the core Ethereum community, uh, the bankless, you know, community, uh, some of the other podcasts out there have been flipping uh, towards the Solana ecosystem and saying, oh, Solana is like the cycle's Ethereum. Is that true? So I am on the other camp, actually. I posted about this on Twitter as well. Like, I am, like, who actually believes this? Who actually believes Solana will outperform Ethereum this cycle? Poll. And a lot of people had very big debates in there. So I'll just tell you this, right? So we have made a, 
uh, detailed Solana prediction, uh, Solana not not prediction, Solana price target, Solana potential for this cycle, and we have uh, covered it here on this video. You should go check that out. But long story short, I definitely think Solana should be able to hit like between seventy eight to one hundred thirty five. So on average, right around hundred dollars, right in this range, and I think that's reasonably possible like i think that's short-term possible even as long as this hype wave continues going to 2024 when the bull run really kicks off solana could easily be a hundred dollars now does that carry over to like much higher levels a lot of people what especially once solana erases that that zero and like goes to 100 people will will say okay now i can go to a thousand but what's the actual upside potential when we're talking about year and a half from now so Solana, it's possible to reach its previous all-time high, right? That's at $250. So the circulating market cap, uh, circulating supply for Solana by the end of, uh, by mid-2025, we're talking about 650 million tokens. So when we do the math on that, taking 650 million, right, times it by $250, that gives us $162 billion. Now, is this too big? How big is this? The market cap ranking for a coin with a $162 billion market cap will be at least top seven, I wanna say top five coin out there. Now, uh, just based on previous cycles. Is this possible? Sure, it's definitely possible. Is this conservative? No, it's definitely not conservative anymore. Uh, 250 is probably the highest target I would place for Solana. Anyone that tells you like, oh, Solana will hit 500, right? If you times this by two, that gives you 325 billion. Essentially no coin outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum has ever achieved a $325 billion market cap and held there over like longer than one month. No coin has ever done this. So uh, that's why I don't think this is likely it's it's highly unlikely so i think 250 is very very good target already very like decently high target that's that's will be hard to achieve so bear with me okay even solana fans bear with me so let's say solana hits 250 right what is the performance of that so when we take 250 dollars of solana divide that by the today's price of 67.8 right let's say 67 that gives us 3.73x return, right? So <clears throat> directly there, you see how Solana is not going to outperform Ethereum in this cycle uh, when we're talking about really one and a half years from now. Just based on that metric, right? It's very, very clear, very clear to me. Solana probably has three to four X return max for the cycle left. Versus on Ethereum, I'm expecting at least another 6x return. Now, <clears throat> people will say, oh yeah, no, that's because like Ethereum is old and Solana is new and Solana will have much better returns. And look at how price is doing right now. Yes, I agree with you. Price in the short term is showing an uptrend of Solana versus Ethereum. And we can see this very clearly as well. So on TradingView, you can plot Solana versus ETH, right? By taking so ETH. And you see, this is a very clear uptrend, right? Since essentially September, Solana consistent uptrend. And then, uh, you know, when we have higher highs, higher highs, higher lows. And then recently, this is kind of a consolidation, right? Very clear, ignore the squiggly lines there, but basically consolidation. And this can still break out, of course it can. But the actual upside of Solana versus Ethereum, how much further is this? Well, in let's say just six months time, can Solana hit another uh, like 80% outperformance versus Ethereum, right? Can it go up another 80% uh, towards like these previous all-time high hype levels against Ethereum? Sure, it can. What that means is 
on Solana's price, uh, let's say it goes up um, 160%, let's say, okay? So it goes up 160% while uh, Ethereum goes up, how much is that? 80%, 160 divided by 80. So yeah, so if Ethereum doubles and Solana goes up 160%, that would be 80% outperformance. Is that likely? Yes. It's totally, totally possible as long as this hype wave continues for Solana. Uh, where in the next six months, Solana still outperforms Ethereum. I'm with you there for Solana fans. But when we're talking about two years, not two, uh, one and a half years down the line, can Solana maintain those high market cap dominance levels? I think the answer is probably no, and it will be hard. So when you look at actual market cap dominance for Solana, currently Solana is at 1.8% of market dominance. If it continues to outrun the market, outrun Ethereum and Bitcoin, and it reaches these previous all-time high market dominance, let's say at 2.6%, uh, right? So that means Solana takes up 2.6% of total crypto market cap. Uh, and then assuming total crypto market cap goes to the $10 trillion levels, right? So that means uh, Solana will be, will need to not only remain at, it, at its dominance versus Ethereum, but also continues to grow with the overall market and beat every single upcoming layer one competitor that's trying to do something similar. That will be very difficult. <clears throat> So you got to consider, okay, Solana is ultra fast, ultra smooth for things like micropayments, things like gaming, things like, um, you know, uh, MasterCard, you know, traditional financial rails settlement. But there are like 20 other blockchains trying to do this in innovation. And there are some verticals that Solana is doing, for example, DPIN, uh, for render network, for AI, for um, Helium. But also, there are so many other deep in projects coming up. So really, when you compare Solana's market resilience versus Ethereum, I think that is the part that's under question. So yes, this short-term wave, I could totally see this continue. But once Solana hits these previous all-time high market dominance, I think as other trending projects come up, in the next year, Solana is likely to lose some market dominance and lose popularity as well. I think that's the likely scenario we'll see. Now, hold on, right? People will say, oh, you're saying Solana is bearish. It's going to go down in price. No, I don't think so. So if Solana hits these market dominance and the dominance drops while the overall crypto market cap grows, what that might look like is that Solana hits something like 100 billion market cap and it just remains there while total crypto market cap grows. In that case, Solana might not even drop in price. It might remain at like $100, $150 for the remainder of the bull run. That will still be really good performance, really strong, one of the top coins. But I just don't see it going to like $260 billion, $300 billion of these market uh, market dominance. Uh, so that's what I see on Solana versus Ethereum. So TLDR is that really the, uh, I think this guy summarized it really well. So much of the talk has been Ethereum is dead and you gotta be either full on Bitcoin for the safety or full on Solana and other altcoins for the outperformance when in reality, I think Ethereum is really making its comeback now uh, because the fundamentals are all there. It's super clear. I, for one, have never ditched Ethereum. It's been in my like profile name since forever. It's um, consistently 25% of my portfolio holdings for 2021, 2022, 2023, and going to 2024 as well. And yeah. Ethereum stronger than ever, to be honest, based on how beat down it is in this uh, recent wave. Okay, now uh, without getting too much down in the rabbit hole, let me just quickly cover uh, what are the Ethereum ecosystem things that are worth paying attention to. So 
obviously you have layer twos, right? You have layer twos, the Ethereum scaling solutions for everyone. This is the winning solution that will bring, uh, is already bringing mass adoption to Ethereum. And uh, going into perhaps late this year, early next year as well, we have proto dank sharding, which will bring uh, transaction costs for Ethereum layer twos, another 10 to 100 X cheaper. So all the costs for layer two transactions will be sub one cent, which will make them all negligible. So obviously you guys know all the top projects, right? We have Polygon, we have Arbitrum, we have Optimism, and we have CK Sync. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh yeah, this guy's talking about these layer twos again. They're like, they're too big. Again, I agree with you. So I don't have a large percentage of my portfolio in these layer twos by all means, right? I think these layer twos will slightly outperform Ethereum. I think all of these will be able to get to around, let's say 70 to 100 billion market cap. I think some of them, uh, some of these four projects, right? Polygon, Arbitrum, Optimism, ZK Sync. These guys, some will make it into top 20 and probably one or two will be top 10. That's kind of my expectation for this cycle, which means uh, the top 20 coins will be like maybe 70 billion ish. And then top 10 coins will be like 100 billion ish, which means uh, currently these are all around eight to $10 billion. So that gives us about a eight X return on the lower side and then about a 12 X return on the higher side, which is not bad. Definitely slightly higher than Ethereum's 6.4 X return. So that's why I think these are worth having in my portfolio. Now, are these going to do 20 X return? No, definitely not. Uh, so that's the, that's my stance on this. And that's why, uh, I have very small percentage in all four of these in order to player play the layer two narrative. You really don't need to consider much, just allocate like a small percentage of your portfolio into these four projects, right? Arbitrum, Optimism, ZK Sync with their token coming up and Polygon, right? As you can see, there are all the top leaders here and, uh, you can see Polygon as well. They, uh, they are still kind of wrongly classified as a layer one, but they're really fully a layer two now. And you're covering the top two technology solutions for layer twos, which is Arbitrum Optimism for optimistic rollup, ZK Sync Polygon for ZK rollup. That's it. Very simple. You don't need any anything else for layer two adoption. So aside from that, the other sector that is popping up with uh, Ethereum and will continue to grow with Ethereum is with staking. So Ethereum's staking ratio is the underlying alpha here, right? So the staking ratio for Ethereum today is at 23%. But when you compare this with other, uh, other layer one blockchains for proof of stake, the ratios are much higher, right? 69%, 65, 60%. So the percentage of total Ethereum staked will continue to rise this cycle, which means the liquid staking providers or the staking pools for Ethereum will continue to rise. Uh, so the market leaders here, Lido, Rocket Pool, and Frax. These three are the ones that are decentralized that you can bet on with a token. So that's the Lido LDO token, the uh, Rocket Pool RPL token, and also the Frax share FXX token. Now these three, again, they are very big coins. So they are kind of what we call a beta play. So as Ethereum goes up, what happens is Ethereum price rises. And at the same time, Ethereum staking ratio rises. This means the total value locked for these liquid staking protocols, as you can see in this column, they will all rise from two metrics, right? Number one is that Ethereum price rises. So each Ethereum staked in this TVL number will, will grow in dollar value, right? Because each, each Ethereum stake is worth more. And on top of that, because more and more percentage of total Ethereum staked uh, is increasing. So more of the, each of these pools will continue to get more of that market share. Thus, these TVLs will all grow. So as the TVLs grow, 
a this is a the, the biggest metric people see and thus the market cap of these coins will also grow now that's not going to be like again like super high returns it's something like you know 10x maybe maximum like 15 20x returns for these altcoins that are in like uh 600 million to about 2 billion market cap but if you want some very clear beta play on the performance of ethereum these are the top three altcoins you need you don't need much more again very simple okay last but not least let's talk about some of the a few innovations that is still worth having in ethereum now this is still going to be in the staking narrative in the staking sector so two sectors uh two innovations in ethereum number one is with lsd phi so lsd phi is the thing is the platforms that take these liquid staking ethereum for example you have uh frax eth rocket pool eth you know uh lido eth and then you put those liquid staked tokens into other things like minting of a stablecoin and then all of a sudden your stablecoin earns native yield using ethereum staking and uh but at the same time you have the stablecoin demand because your asset is stable so this brings in potentially a tens of billion dollars in market cap because a lot of people want their assets to be held in stable coins not fluctuating in price while still earning uh asset yield from staking so one project here that's really cool actually is prisma this is a newer project slightly lower valuation i think this has a lot more potential going uh, into the cycle in the lsd5 wave when it's actually doing something new uh, another one that you can bet on for lsd5 is pendle this is one that just uh, separates the yield aspect from uh from the principal aspect if you are a power user or you can also try to get <clears throat> you can try to get higher yield by locking your Ethereum staking for multiple years, and you can see you can get higher yield here. Uh, so Prisma and Pendle are two of the LSD5 projects that I have some in my portfolio. And then last but not least, <clears throat> one really like much, much more exciting sector in Ethereum is Eigenlayer. So Eigenlayer, you probably have heard of like Eigenlayer restaking, Eigenlayer data availability, what is that all about right so tldr for this is that when you stake ethereum using like rocket pool lido or coinbase whatever you get these staked ethereum tokens uh on the traditional DeFi side yes you can provide liquidity with those and earn more yield but what what eigenlayer does is that it plots these uh uh staked ethereum and rocket pool ethereum into a new staking contract what's called a restaking protocol and on top of what this enables is that by using restaking you uh you can have your ethereum staking that not only secures ethereum proof of stake and help validate transactions there but also you can use those staked Ethereum to help other protocols and help them validate transactions or help them bootstrap their security. These are things like, for example, layer twos or DeFi protocols uh, built using um, Ethereum app chains, right? So by using your Ethereum staking power, not only to power Ethereum natively, but power also other layer twos and other protocols, you get double the yield one part coming from ethereum staking one part coming from whatever other types of tokens you get by restaking so this is the really cool part that eigenlayer uh solves and really they they pretty much invented this and um yeah eigenlayer is one one of the only few uh ethereum ecosystem innovations coming this cycle that is really really strong really novel and um this is essentially the only other competition versus the liquid staking kind of uh, uh landscape okay so uh, eigenlayer hasn't launched yet i they might even have an airdrop so i think it's worth trying to stake some of your ethereum here 
uh i'll keep you guys updated on this okay so that's eigenlayer and uh what else is there for ethereum yeah so one other smaller narrative coming up for ethereum that might pick up this year is called uh, account abstraction so account abstraction is this whole concept where ethereum wallets completely ditches the concept of seed phrases and private keys and signing of transactions and metamask and instead just uses more traditional ways of recognizing accounts and in order to onboard traditional you know retail users so they come in they don't have to worry about their seed phrases it's a smart wallet that's handled for them and all they need to remember is that i have this like wallet app i have a password that's all i need to care about uh this is a trend that i could get behind and um i think next year we might see some more hype for account abstraction being kind of a popular theme going for ethereum okay that's everything for ethereum for today and pretty much for next year and a half uh, that's worth paying attention to again is the ethereum ecosystem like going to give you 100x return answer is no right ethereum itself i'm looking at about a uh 50 percent outperformance versus bitcoin which is uh, about a 6.5x return uh until the bull run peaks uh when you look at layer twos like arbitrum polygon optimism zk sync these things can do maybe an 8 to 10x 8 to 12x even for uh wh whichever one that really pops off uh so that's why i have a small percentage of my portfolio in these to capture that growth but they're not exponential growth when you talk about liquid staking lido rocket pool frax these are good coins these can probably do like 12 15x maybe 20x if ethereum staking really becomes widely adopted uh, and these staking pools all will grow in their tvl again not super high returns uh, when you're looking at really really good potential returns lsd phi sector is much more interesting and restaking sector with eigenlayer also very interesting and that's it i think uh that's all the alpha I have for Ethereum. And last but not least, like don't buy into the hype that Ethereum is dead. Ethereum will get replaced by Solana. You should hold all Solana now because Solana will outrun Ethereum in the long term. I think that's highly unlikely. In the short term, yes, Solana will continue to outrun Ethereum for a bit, but Solana is really reaching very high valuations, which really caps how high they can get in terms of price growth uh how many how many extra uh, excess it can do in the cycle join our discord discord.gg slash virtual bacon so i like to play all kinds of things right so there's the ethereum and ethereum run up with the ethereum comeback so we covered eth btc ratio and at the same time i took positions in matic in uh arbitrum right so you can see arbitrum uh we talked about it on yesterday's live stream as well, right? And Arbitrum is doing really well on this short, uh, short-term short rally here. You see from our yesterday, uh, from our coin list, right? So we had Arbitrum position. We entered right around these lows here. And this position is up uh, about 10% today. Really good. So whenever Ethereum pops off, the Ethereum related ecosystem coins also pop off. So you have Arbitrum, Matic, Polygon, uh, Matic Polygon, uh, Optimism, right? And then you have the liquid staking coins, Lido, Rocket Pool, uh, Frax. These all popped off today. And uh, our trade is doing really well if you're into that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I'm not a short term maxi, right? For a trader, it's all about rotations, it's all about narrative. So we were following the entire Solana narrative since i want to say uh first week of november right so many many waves of rotation between ethereum to solana solana to avax and again i have entered into solana right uh in our we covered this in our discord as well first tp have already hit once from our initial position that we entered around 54 dollars and then um 
similarly here, I think I had a re-entry on Seoul. Yeah, here made a re-entry on Seoul at 60 cents. Even though I don't think Solana will outperform Ethereum long run, short term, rally is really strong. So can this hit like 78 in this next rally up? Totally. Like this is my short term trade that we're looking at. And I, I made this completely clear. want to separate myself from long term position versus short term trade. Those are completely different. And yeah, I'm happy that Solana is doing this run up and position is doing well. We're making money. So. Uh, yeah, definitely join our Discord if you want to see all of that. And uh, yeah, that's, I think, everything I wanted to cover for today. So thank you guys for joining. And uh, before I go, just last quick plug for most important things of mine. So number one, follow me on Twitter, X, at VirtualBaconZeroX. This is where I drop all of our quick alpha before I make them into videos. And number two, join our Discord, discord.gg slash VirtualBacon, where we have our free VIP program for trade alerts, daily market analysis for Bitcoin, Ethereum, for all of our altcoins as well. Uh, we have been sh sharing just directly my trades. You can copy my trades with our uh, affiliate links and you can join the discussion as well. Okay, uh, that's it. Everything is good and hope you guys found this helpful. Hope you guys have Ethereum, Bitcoin and the rest of the uh, portfolio as well. And oh yeah, last but not least, if you guys are looking forward to the portfolio video this is coming up i know this is the most requested thing so this is coming really soon uh look out for this even this weekend but latest next week early next week our 2024 per full portfolio video will drop so definitely subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss it okay that's it thank you guys for watching and i will see you on the next video and next live stream cheers bye bye